Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my music theory tuition series where I'm working with you step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets and you can download those in US letter or A4 to accompany each step of this series to help you. You'll find a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find out about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and hints on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time come exam day when you're actually working through your paper. If you can give me a like, that would be fab. And please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more to come. And now we're going to have a look at um, the paper one, paper A of the grade one 2018 past papers. We'll start with question six this time. So if you turn with me to page five, we can make a start on these questions here. So as I always say, I know I'm repeating myself, but do have a crack at this on your own. First of all, it doesn't matter if you go wrong. It's always better to learn by your mistakes. Always write in pencil and then you can just rub it out and have another go. So we have um, some dynamic symbols here and we need to rearrange them so that they are from the loudest to the quietest. If you remember, F is forte, which is loud. P is piano, which is quiet. M means mezzo, middle or moderately. And when we have the letter doubled up, we say issimo, so pianissimo or fortissimo, and that sort of means extra, so extra loud, extra quiet. So we started off fortissimo, which is extra loud. So coming down in step, the next is just simply loud, so forte is the next one. Now then, mezzo forte is moderately loud, so we can see we're stepping down, we've gone very loud, loud, now just moderately loud, mezzo forte. And so now we're on to the quiet uh, dynamics. So after mezzo forte, mezzo piano, sort of only moderately quiet now, is the next one down. And then just plain old piano, quiet there. And finishing with pianissimo, which is extra quiet or very quiet. So it just takes a little bit of thinking about, but you can work your way through that logically if you just give it a moment's thought. Let's move on to the next question. So question seven asks us to add a clef to make these notes correctly named and so we just need to recap what the notes of the treble and the bass clef are so we've given us a starting point here just to help you out so the treble clef letters are every good boy deserves football for the lines or every green bus drives fast or whatever helps you to remember those and the spaces spell face, F-A-C-E. In the bass clef, it's as if everything's dropped down a line or dropped down a space. If you refer to your PDF document, if you go to sections D, there's the treble clef, and sections E, I've just mapped that out for you and given you a bit of practice there. So it's as if in the bass clef, everything's dropped down, and so the bass clef is, instead of being every good boy, it starts off good, boys deserve football always and instead of being face it's as if it goes ace all cows eat grass everything's dropped down a line or a space so let's look at these so we know this is an e now here we're already off the uh, lines and spaces for the poems and we now need to think about it in terms of um, if this is middle c in the bass clef, middle C is at the top of the bass clef, the bottom of the treble clef. If this is middle C, one step below that would be B. So that confirms that that's bass clef. Alternatively, you can think, well, in the bass clef, it goes good, boys, deserve football, always as the top line, A, B is next to that. So you can count upwards from more familiar territory if you prefer. So 
starting on the second line with the dots positioned either side. So here we know this is the treble clef E, every good boy, there's a B flat so that must be treble clef. So if that's the treble clef on the middle line is a B, this obviously can't be treble clef again and we know that it's good boys deserve, there's the D in the bass clef. Now middle C, we just said it's at the top of the bass, the bottom of the treble, there's middle C and you can confirm that by going line, space, line, C, D, E, every good boy. So we can work out from E, D, C that that's treble clef as well, if we want to come at it from a different angle. So now then, we know that if this was a treble clef, it would be an F. Every good boy deserves football. That's not correct. The bass clef, good boys deserve football always. That's correct. So we know it's an A in the bass clef. Now then, again, we've gone off the lines and spaces, so we need to work it out from familiar territory. We've already worked out here that this is the B below middle C in the bass clef. So it can't be the bass clef, and so if we confirm that it's in the treble clef, we know the lines go, every good boy deserves football. F is the top line, next door to that would be G, so that's correct in the treble clef. There we go. And we've already just done the thinking for this one, we know it's every good boy deserves football, F sharp in the treble clef. Otherwise it would be an A sharp in the bass clef. Once you've done a few, you usually find that they'll help you work out the rest. So we know that in um, the treble clef, the space is spelled face, F-A-C-E, so that works out as an A in the treble clef. If it was the bass clef, it would be a C, all cows eat grass, a C, there we go. So again, we're sort of off the um, lines and spaces of the little rhyme we use, so we need to just think about uh, how to work that out. We know in the bass clef it goes good, boys deserve, so on. So if that's a G in the bass clef, one below G is F. If you find it difficult to visualise that, just visualise the piano keyboard. There's G, one below that is F. So we know that's a bass clef, F. Alternatively, you could think, well, it can't be treble clef because if it was middle C, next door to that would be D. And so that's another clue that it won't work in treble clef. And then here, we've already worked out that this is an A in the treble clef, so that can't be treble clef. And we know the bass clef is all cows eat grass. There's C sharp, a C sharp in the bass clef. So there we go. So it just takes a little bit of thinking, but if you just take your time, you've got plenty of time, uh, you'll soon get to grips with that. <clears throat> and now we'll press on to question eight. So <clears throat> from 2018 onwards, <coughs> do excuse me, these performance directions and musical terms are presented to you in multiple choice format. It still doesn't take away the fact that there's lots to revise. I suggest that you group them thematically to help you to get to grips with which term is which. Everything to do with slow, everything to do with fast. You could even colour code it. There's a lot to be learning. And I'm not sure that multiple choice actually makes it any easier because sometimes there's a bit of a red herring that just throws you off the scent. Be careful to read these correctly because sometimes the definitions aren't quite correct and so don't tick the wrong one. So I suggest you have a go of these yourself. Just have a go, it's a good revision technique. And in the PDF document that I provided for you at the end, I've given you some tips and hints on how to revise and then I do give you a little bit of a test to help you to test yourself there. So let's have a go and check these through. Allegro means quick. Here this is a pause mark. It's also known as a fermata, so that's a pause mark there. 
a cellarando is gradually getting quicker. That's not a difficult one to work out. You can see the root meaning of the word accelerate there. So gradually getting quicker does make sense. Here we have a repeat mark. So where you be bounce between those to repeat a section. Cantabile means in a singing style. Just find a way of uh, revising that. I think it's quite a, a beautiful lyrical sounding word to my mind. So in my abstract thinking that makes um, a, a connection between the definition and the word. Uh, just however your brain works. Just find a way of remembering that. And then here we have this little sort of arrow over the top of the note and that means an accent. So we accent the note. So there we go, that's that question completed. I hope this is helping you, I hope that you get into grips with this. We'll look at the next question in the next video. If you can give me a like, that would be really super. I do hope that this is helping you and I hope that you're enjoying it. I'm certainly helping, oh, I'm certainly enjoying helping you. Uh, please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more in store. And also please do visit SharonBill.com and make use of all of the resource and information that's available there to help you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.